the only reason this didn't happen at 1 o'clock, the only thing that could have kept this from happening at 1 o'clock was Joe Girardi. So for you Giant fans who had to wait to hear the Yankee manager, if you're Yankee fans, it was no issue. If not, I apologize for you having to be delayed an hour to hear what you're about to hear, okay? And I'm sure you probably either have uh, given up the rest of your tickets, tried to find some fool who would buy them for any amount of money if there is such a person on the earth, although I guess you could sell them individually to teams from uh, fans from the NFC East. But after what we watched yesterday, all bets are off. The most important words spoken on a day where any word you listen to after the game was utter nonsense, especially the ramblings of the head coach who thought his team competed, which is almost as scary as what we watched during the game that he thought his team competed. I'll wait for his, you know, review after he's had a chance to, as we always, you know, go with coaches. When coaches are in trouble, they always say the same thing. Oh, I have to see the film. That's his way of getting out of answering anything. That's the first thing they teach you as a head coach. Remember these words. I have to see the film. Okay, so as soon as you know that, now he has seen the video. And now he knows what we all knew yesterday, and that is that the Giants decided that they don't want to play. Not everybody. I'll give you one giant that I thought was actually good yesterday, and that's Ingram, who shows that he is going to be a very talented receiver. He doesn't block anybody, but he's going to catch. I told you he's going to catch 100 passes in a year very quickly. It could even happen this year if somebody can get him enough balls. That's He's got talent. But the offense, I think, for the most part, tried to try and tell me that the, the special teams – I'm going to hope they weren't trying with the way they played. But the defense, especially the secondary, if you're going to tell me they tried, then I'm going to tell you that you're either lying or you have somehow forgotten everything you knew once about this sport because you can't sell at anywhere that they were trying. You can't look at some of these plays yesterday and tell me that they're trying because they were 40 yards, they were 20 yards away from the play. They were 15 yards away from the play. And there were times, and go back and look at the third and 33. The first third and 33 to go for a touchdown, the, best, the first third and 30 or more to go for a touchdown since 1989 in the NFL. Never in the 90s, never in the zeros, never yet in the ones, and we're at 17. Has there been a play where someone has scored on a third and 30 or better in the NFL until yesterday, where giant defenders basically said, see ya, as the guy went by. I mean, it was as utterly disgraceful, despicable the performance as anything you could ever see. 50 points, the Giants, the Giants, who used to have a history of defense, 50 points. Giants haven't allowed 50 points at home since 1964. 64. They haven't been one and seven since before Bill Parcells, and a lot of things changed with Bill Parcells. Matter of fact, the franchise changed with George Young and Bill Parcells, and a little bit with Ray Perkins, but really it changed with George Young and Bill Parcells. There was the pre Parcells era. That was the just the days in the desert since the early days of the 60s. What went on from 64? until 80 was not pretty and for giant fans wants to be forgotten but when you when you bring up those days and you hear not since 80 not since 64 you know you are in rarefied territory and as i said the only words that mattered yesterday not anything that came out of the coach's mouth not even anything that came out of the quarterback's mouth mattered what mattered were the words that came out of john mara's mouth this performance speaks for itself. That speaks volumes. And if you didn't get the message, I'll relay it to you. It better change quickly or you're going to have new addresses. This will not sit. There is no team that I've experienced anywhere that handles bad optics better or worse, I should say, or more emotionally than the Giants. They hate when it looks bad. And now it doesn't look bad. It looks pitiful. 
the head coach was asked in the post game, and I went to watch the post game. I wanted to get to the Cowboy game against the Chiefs, but you know, and see some real football after having watched three hours of that. And there was yesterday at one o'clock was the worst set of games in the history of mankind. There was nothing to watch. Even even Atlanta and Carolina wasn't even any good. So I actually watched every play of this rotten giant game. Every play. I should be paid for that. That's how bad it was. And what you saw was a young coach who has created a culture and wanted to go for the juggler, maybe for his grandfather, whoever. He went for the juggler. I gathered afterwards, he told his team, we're not going to win. We are going to embarrass them. That's what I heard he told his team before the game. We're not going to win. We're going to embarrass them. Well, you know what? He did. He didn't just win. He embarrassed them. He embarrassed them scoring on eight or nine possessions. He embarrassed them early. He embarrassed them late. He embarrassed anybody who has anything to do with that football team. And for that head coach to stand there in, in what has become a comatose second year, an utterly indescribable second year, and they have too many players to, to play like this. But as bad as this year has gotten, and you saw now yesterday with your own eyes what would have happened if they had maybe taken the guy off the Ram line and put him on the Giant line. But be that as it may, we know that they had the O-line covered. Heads are going to roll for this. And this is set up as badly as it could possibly be set up. Because you have all those NFC East teams coming in late. And those games aren't going to just hurt. They're going to sting. They're going to be like open wounds. They're going to be like just, you know, putting a stick in open wounds. They are going to be so painful for this team to sit through that. And the worst thought is that the Giants still have to sit through eight games. You know, this is not week 15. This is not week 16. And you say back up the truck for these bums because there's a game left. There's eight games left. And they have nothing to offer you. And I don't know what went on in the last couple of weeks between the head coach and certain members of the defense and the head coach and the secondary. But the secondary let him have a message yesterday. You know what? We don't agree. Because you can't tell me they were that bad on their own. And they sent a message. Now, Eli Apple's been bad all year. If he hasn't found a bench after yesterday, then I don't get it. Because his play yesterday, if he's trying, then he shouldn't even have a uniform. Because you can't play that bad and be trying. If you are, you know what? It's time to find another line of work. Because he didn't even give a little bit of an effort. A little bit. And then when the head coach makes your head want to explode, when he sits there and says, well, we, uh, we competed. We tried. We tried hard. He tried hard. Well, I got to look at the film, but we tried hard. We tried hard. Yeah. And I think it was Kim asked him about pride or loyalty. Not the, uh, are they embarrassed? Are they embarrassed? Which was a good question. I think it was her. I think it was her. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And the answer was, no. We're just disappointed. If 51 in your own building from what is a maybe up-and-coming team that has a chance to make the playoffs this year. And that's all the Rams are. I think the coach is changing the culture. I think they have some good players, some of which the Giants decided they didn't need. But they aren't the Patriots. They aren't a couple of other teams. In They're not the Steelers. They're not the Chiefs. They're not the Falcons, who have their own problems right now. But they don't have that kind of talent. But they came in with a swagger. They came in with an idea of what it looks like to be a team. And that's what I've told you about that young coach is his team looks like a team. They're running off, that, off the field. They're orderly. They know what they're doing. They know how to do it. They know what they want to do, and they want to play. They're hungry for success. The Giants are right now such a low-level mess. It is, so, it is hard to even describe how low and how far they have fallen. And we saw it yesterday. And to say jobs are in jeopardy is almost something that's not even worth saying because it's so obvious when you get to this level in this league, 
everything is in jeopardy. Existence is in jeopardy when it gets to this level. And I'm not taking anybody off the griddle. The offensive line didn't block. Eli, who was skittish from early on in the game, played terribly. He didn't hold on to the ball on the first drive. He missed wide open receivers. Eli's better than that. He made some really good throws in the game. Yeah, he did. He also made some horrific throws. He missed Shepard wide open on a post. He missed King in the end zone. Those were two touchdowns. Made a nice throw or two. Yeah, he did make some good throws, but he made way too many bad throws. He definitely was affected by the rush. He looked like he was affected by the rush, and he didn't hold on to that early fumble, which, again, Nothing was going to change the way the defense played yesterday. So I don't think the offense that the Giants have now could even, even with Shepard back, which is a positive, could in any way keep pace with the Rams. And I'm going to tell you that I think for the most part, although it's hard to tell with a couple of the whiffs on the offensive line, who let guys just come you know, clean to the quarterback. I don't know if every one of them is trying. It's hard to tell on television. I didn't think the offense, I didn't get the idea the offense was a hustling. I got the complete, total picture of a defense that wanted no part of the competition, no part of the game, and a secondary that was actually not trying. And when you have a secondary that's not trying, NFL games get extremely embarrassing. And that's what you got yesterday when the Giants, the football Giants, allowed 50 points 50 5 1 this is the giants allowed 50 points in their building where are we going we're going nowhere are the giants going to go to a young quarterback you know what they might because maybe that's a way to sell eight games i'm sure we'll talk to Eli about that later the coach after the game stated that will judge will you know will will play young players at every position guys who you know get a chance to play and opportunities will use this time to do this he better think about winning a couple of games but he was asked about the quarterback position he said every position which is means the quarterback too if the giants want to play the youngster play him that's up to you go ahead and play him what it means for the future we'll have to wait and see but you want to play him play him Except behind this offensive line, it's not going to be pretty. It's not like he's going to be some kind of savior, but go ahead. Everyone likes to look at the young quarterbacks. Giant fans are no different. So maybe they want to look at a young quarterback. I'm sure they don't want to look at anybody right now uh, the way they're playing, including Eli. Does Eli give this team the best chance to win? Yes, but that's not what this is about. This is about the Giants trying to sell you something now. Trying in some way to sell you something. The 11 games that were won last year gave this head coach in his first year a chance to solidify a base for his career. He didn't do that in one year. You can't unless you go and win a Super Bowl in your first year. But it gives you a chance to build a base. He has destroyed that completely to where now he's got eight games to show why he shouldn't be out of here. Because you can't see the Giants selling any of this going forward, except saying, back up the truck. And that's where with eight games, we are in the first week in November. We're not in the third week in December here. They have eight games to play. They still have to go to Oakland. They still have to play tough teams in tough spots. They still have the Eagles and the Cowboys, and the Redskins twice, and a trip to Arizona on Christmas Eve, tough games that have to be played other than this Niner game, where this week it's almost a punchline to discuss the Niners and the Giants, who they told me earlier today between them have 23 injured starters. That's great. Not an excuse. Maybe it is for the young Niners, not for the Giants. Not when you give up 51 points. This goes deeper than that. This goes deeper than injuries. This goes to the core of who you are. And this coach has got to snap out of it. When he's asked about that performance, 
you can't tell me, well, we're disappointed and we'll try to win a game. We'll, you know, this is a good challenge for all of us. This isn't a challenge now. This is for you, just utter survival. Because this is something that will not stand and will not be accepted. And that's where speak for yourself, speaks for itself, comes into this. 51-17, in your building, non-competitive, embarrassing. Every announcer, everybody who watched the game, everybody from the guys who did the game to the guys in the studio to the guys who talked about it last night on NBC, all stated the same thing to America. Giants quit cold. Not one of them did. You went to the Giant post game. That's what they said there, whether it was Antrell Roll or whoever it was. Giants quit cold. That's the optic. That's the theme. That's the story. That's what this head coach and these players have to climb out from under with eight games to play. Speaks for itself. And what it says is you guys have hit a depth. Most teams never, and Giant teams never, ever approach. How would you ever take a salary for that game? Take your game check, check and give it to charity, please. Do something constructive with it. You sure didn't earn it yesterday. What an embarrassment. Back after this.